everyone. Welcome back. I hope everybody's being safe. Uh, I was finally able to get out and get my hair cut. I started looking like a woolly booger, but uh, today I want to work on both my fenders, my front fenders. Uh, I want to get these prepped and, and in primer. Um, the last video we actually put in a lot of metal patches, blended those in with welding, and then put some fiberglass on here. I'm going to get this fiberglass knocked off, get it blended in, go over the whole thing with a DA or just probably, I'll probably just use an electric sander. Uh, is what is my kind of what I like. I've got them both. I'll, a little bit of both, but basically get these things prepped and get these in primer, and possibly even get some more of the tub in primer. So let's get started. Let's get some of this stuff knocked out. All right, for the most part, the panel is done. It's, um, you saw where I, I blended out all the fiberglass and then I went with a, D, a DA and um, was able to take a lot of the color off, the remaining uh, primer and stuff like that. Then I ended up going with a just a regular electric orbital sander with 150 grit and got it down. Now, you know, these Jeeps were always, they just bent metal and put them together and spot weld them. You can see all the spot welds, which aren't, um, you know, they don't, you could always see them in the in the in the original, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prime this just to protect it, and then if those are very prevalent, then I'll probably go back and do a little body filler on them, just just a real skim coat, just to kind of make them kind of disappear. But uh, other than that, I think the panel turned out okay. There's some a little bit hard reach spots. So I'm going to have to go back with some uh, red Scotch Bright and we'll touch that up. So I'll get this thing put away, and then tomorrow. We will um, we'll drag out the other one. The other one is a lot closer off, so it doesn't have as much work to be done to it. We'll get that thing polished up, and then I'll probably try and set a schedule where I can actually get them, you know, go ahead and prime them, and uh, we'll get that all included in this video. I've got to go now. I can smell my wife's got uh, steak on the grill, and uh, I better go clean up. She ain't going to let me hit the dinner table looking like this. So um, uh, give me a few minutes, and we'll get back, and we'll, we'll have that other one out here. All right, I'm ready to get started on this second uh, fender. This is the passenger fender. This is the one that was originally black and uh, had a small repair up here that I got some fiberglass on. Plus, there's a lot of holes that this thing uh, had drilled in it you know, throughout the years of its life. And, and I don't really know that I was going to use those, so I went ahead and welded those in. And some of them had uh, some divots that I went ahead and filled out. So we're going to get that sanded off. This fender should be really fast to, to get it because most of the paint actually came off with a stripper. I'm going to bring you in close and show you a couple of things. One is up here and also something that's happening here on the back side. All right, so check out the dull sheen that's on this surface. This is basically just after that chemical uh, paint stripper we used to remove this paint. It bubbled off, scraped it off, and did nothing else. And while the paint stripper took off the paint, it did not take off what I think is almost like a chemical etching of this metal, which made it rust proof. Uh, so that was, that's kind of neat to know that that was down there. Uh, but let me show you this ba other back side. So this is the back of that inner wheel well and um, I remember after we got all that paint stripped off I did hit this with a little sander and by taking off actually I can see here where I actually sandblasted this a little bit by taking off that uh, That chemical etching that allowed this whole section here to kind of do some flash rusting So anyway, we're gonna get this all sanded back off with the orbital sander 
gonna touch this whole piece and uh, get it prepped for primer. Well, we got the inner fender done. Um, all everything blended in, and all that rust that was back here, I got that all just just it was just surface rust. It came off very easily. So uh, now I'm going to flip it over and do what would be the outside. Okay, that went super quick, um, like 10 minutes, and that thing was all buzzed down because the, the paint stripper did such a good job. The last thing I got to do is the inner side of this. I do have some uh, fiberglass in here on the inside of those welds to protect it from the moisture. And then um, and I'm going to spare you of any of that footage. Earlier today, I looked at the footage from the other fender and the raw footage, and I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to make that any, anywhere interesting for anything online? But And uh, it's all the footage you just saw when I've probably chopped it up hopefully I did a pretty good job but um, I am I'm not gonna film any of this but I'm gonna get under here there's just little spots about this big for uh, fiberglass I gotta kind of sand out as well as just kind of hit the whole thing so let me get that done and then this will be done all right got it all done uh, there's some small areas uh, small tight corners and stuff like that where still a little bit of surface rust so I went ahead and hit kind of the creases and some of that stuff with uh, some Eastwood uh, rust encapsulator just to kind of go ahead and treat that uh, several places even like down around this little seam right there but uh, yep now I gotta set my garage up a uh, little section I need to tomorrow morning I'll prep an area where I can get these things painted so I have to work on that tomorrow morning see you in a little bit all right I finally got these things strung up for primer but let me tell you it's been a pain in the butt uh, the one on the right is the one that we did uh, I actually sand final sanded it maybe a week ago uh, it turned out as of last night I saw there's a lot of surface uh, just surface rust on it so I knew I had to go back over it again but the one on the left is the one I did yesterday and it also had you could feel you couldn't really see it but you could feel it so I've had I actually had to just resand both of these blow them off and uh, now I've wiped them down with denatured alcohol they're they're ready to go um, so let's go ahead and mix some primer Okay, so this is the hard part for me a little bit. I have no idea how much primer to mix up for two fenders and two coats. I can't find my notes from the last time I used this primer. And my first gut was 10 ounces, which is right here. And I look at that, that, oh, that may not be enough. And I look at something like this, here's 16 ounces. And I don't know if I used, tried to spray those two fenders, two coats with this, if I'd get through it with 16 ounces. So, you know, I'm kind of at a loss. and. I think what I'm gonna do, if I did a four to four ratio, that'd be right about 11 ounces. That's that 10, 11 ounce here. Um, I, I need more than that. So I'll do the five. I need a one to one ratio. I'm gonna do five and five, and that's gonna be right here at about 14 ounces. And I know as soon as I say that, you experienced painters are gonna say, oh no, not, not 14 ounces, it's gonna be way too much or whatever. But uh, I'd rather have some left over than run out. So let me. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this um, five and five, and see what we get to there. So we've had this stirred up quite a bit. Let's see if it'll. And every time I use this jug, it, I get, there's a pour spout we can get put on here, and I need to I need to order one of those. All right, so while I'm stirring this, I do want to put a shout out to Russ over at Double R Restorations, his channel there. Just last week, he he did a kind of a reminder video on. You know, gun cleanup, and so I went out and bought 
you know, more lacquer thinner. I couldn't find my lacquer thinner in this bottle, which helps clean out the gun, as well as a couple pans. Uh, I think that's a great idea. He's got a great video. If you've not seen that video, um, you need to check that out. I'll see if I can put a link right here above so you can see and get to that. But uh, Russ did a great job on that. I just, it reminded me of you know, just all the things I need to do to prep for this to, for today. So for that first coat of primer, I mixed up 14 and a half ounces of, of primer and I had one ounce left. So uh, while I'm waiting for this to flash off, I went ahead and mixed another 15 or 14 and a half ounces. So ultimately I'll probably have about two ounces left. So it may be on the good side, but uh, let's let this flash off and then we'll get a second coat on it. All right, here we go for round two. Um, it typically takes a 30 minute flash time it's extremely humid here. In fact, during while it was flashing, it actually poured outside. I had to close the door, turn off the fans. I'm gonna leave that off like that. If it gets too hazy in here, I'll pop, it stopped raining, but uh, just trying to keep that humidity out. Um, if, uh, if it gets a little cloudy in here, I'll just pop those doors open and then turn those fans back on. So let me, uh, let's get this last coat laid. All right, we're all done. So we've got these both in primer. Real pleased pretty much with what with the results. There is quite a bit of trash in them and I just can't get a quality paint job in the facility that I've got here. I mean, there's just, just kind of dust everywhere. I swept out, I blew out, I blew the roof. I, I did it covered everything. You know, it's, it's just not gonna quite happen. So it kind of brings up the question whether or not I'll end up doing the final painting uh, for this Jeep here. May even try it outside, might even get better results. But uh, anyway, we'll think about that. May, may even try and collaborate with a, a local YouTuber or uh, just a local shop and see if uh, we can do some, some time in, in, in their shop. But anyway, um, beyond that, you know, the uh, finished primer here, it will get a, a seal, sealed coat later. So we'll get sanded down, I'm not worried about the, the trash that's in it now. But you know, interesting about these Jeep fenders is they're made out of four different pieces of stamped metal. There's the, you know, the front outer fender piece, which is this, which goes to about right in here. Then there's this rear outer piece, which is down here, and they're sandwiched together here. And then you got this piece here that kind of just laps on top of that, and it's spot welded in, um, which creates really a rust issue. And that's where I had issue on my original pieces. And then in the back, and you can see through here, there's a, uh, the inner fender, and it's sandwiched pretty much right here and some other places. But... Um, you know, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually going to go around specifically in the wheel tub and put uh, put a probably a one inch wide strip of seam sealer 
you know, go specifically in here and make sure everything is sealed. That any water coming off those tires are not going to get into some of those joints and just create uh, rust areas. So between that and on the inner inner fender side, there's some areas that I'll uh, also put. So we'll, we'll get this seam sealed, and I'm actually going to kind of put it away for a little while. I do need to. I, I'm not happy at all with with those uh, spot weld, the factory spot welds. That's just not going to be acceptable. So that'll get a little glazing putty. Uh, just to smooth those out, then we'll get a, a final uh, ceiling coat on it, then ultimately into the paint. But uh, anyway, kind of pleased with the way those work, and uh, I guess got to talk about the uh, elephant in the room. Got the little kind of the I've had a goatee since night January twenty seventh of nineteen ninety nine. Uh, but I decided to go let the beard grow out. Uh, I got a hunting trip up in Minnesota this winter, and I want to kind of. Everyone's growing a beard, and, and uh, interesting. Everyone's bringing lever action guns. It's gonna be kind of a kind of a fun trip. But uh, so as always, I want to thank you for watching the video, following along. the The amount of people that we've attracted throughout the years. Yeah, this is kind of a two year project so far. Um, it's been incredible. The comments and the camaraderie and and that, and as well as a lot of new new viewers. There's been. In just the past two videos or so, a lot of people kind of picked up on the project and, and hopefully they've decided to follow along as well. But uh, it's all just a great community of whether you're a Jeep fan or whether you're just doing some restoration and picking up some ideas and um, all that stuff. It's, it's just incredible. I, I love all the comments. It it's, uh, just makes me feel really good. So anyway, you know, I think about this project every day, whether I'm you know, just thinking about what I might do next or kind of the order of things to do, whether I'm doing research, whether I'm down here just cleaning up the shop. Uh, it's never not on my mind. I, I, I don't always bang a hammer every day, but but I definitely, you know, think about it and do something. It's uh, it's a long project. It's, you know, long projects are hard to stay on track. You got to you got to give yourself a break occasionally, but you got to really figure out how to get back into them as well. So, um, you know, I've got a lot of channels that I follow where the, the builds have kind of petered off a little bit, but, uh, you know, I'm I'm still uh, hopeful that they'll end up picking back up when they get a second wind. Um, I got plenty of wind. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to get these put away and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do next, but you'll have to learn about that next time. Jack it up.